Doug White for Model Car Muse. We're here at the Connecticut Street Rod Association Model Car Show, which is the most relaxed, mellow show. No fee, there's no paperwork to fill out. We just come in, we hang out with our buddies, and talk about models. And I'm here with Steve Magnani and Rick Hanmore. Rick Hanmore, a legend. I read your stuff in Scale Auto back in the 80s when I was like 20 years old, so it's cool to meet you guys. Appreciate that. We were talking about Steve's builds. You've seen him on Instagram? Yeah, I do have pictures that I post on Instagram, but most of my videos are on YouTube. Steve Bignanti's Junkyard Crawl on YouTube. Of course, the Bear Jackson a little bit, and building model cars. Building model cars. Some of these are gonna look familiar. You've been following Steve, especially this Cadillac, which has a great backstory. You know, if you know your, your model car history, Joe Han, of course, John Hanley. It was a, one of the legends of the times. And the Hall and Hearst was a, uh, a weird but classic model. So what I kind of did is I took the spirit and the theme of the Hall and Hearst and combined it with one of the last Joe Han models ever, the 79 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, to wind up with, it's going to be called Hanley's Hauler. And it's basically an altered wheelbase Coupe de Ville with the same yellow and white with the Hanley's Hauler graphics. And the idea is that I'll do that. My only thing is that for the building that I can kind of do, I can't paint well letters. So decals, I have to send off to have decals made. Uh, so that's the, uh, the bottleneck, I suppose, in my building, you know. Um, Bottleneck in another two months. Another two months, yeah, it takes time. A yeah. little turnaround yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, I guess in the old days, the Alps printer was something people used. And, and Rick, have you ever used an Alps printer to make graphics? No, or? no I have not. Yeah, they're getting hard to find, or, in the, or the materials to go with them is, is difficult to get a hold of. So. There is a workaround, and people do use Alps printers, but it's a little more involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got a video on that? Should I tune into? Not so, yet, yeah. but I should be doing one. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah, because again, for me, one yeah, of the things right. you'll see on my models that I build here, you'll see first off, if the decals exist in a kit for like a Sox and Martin or a Ram Chargers, then I can build a model. But after a while, if I don't have the decals, I don't build the kits, which is why I wind up doing yeah. goofy stuff, which I like it. But Sox and Martin never had a Barracuda like this, but the decals exist, which opens the door to the model. So I need a way to make the graphics that I can be free of having to make uh, what ifs. I love that build because out of the corner of my eye, I see Sandy Alley. Yes. And then I go, wait, that's a Mopar. It's not a Mustang. Yeah, it's, it's to that point, here it is, the Sandy yeah. Elliott. This is a Ford. Now, I was going to put Mox and Sartin on the car, because I figured that Ronnie Sox is, you know, with all respect, his tombstone is probably bumping up and down with his name on a, his Ford. But with yeah. that said, the beauty of model cars is you can mix themes and have fun. And until you get an Alps printer, and then you can do it for real. But I don't have an Alps printer yet, so. But you know, that works. It really works. I don't know if it's the fastback or the wheels or what, but it, on a Mopar, of course, red, white, and blue is always great. I was going to say, red and white and blue always looks good. And one thing that's fun, too, is, you know, I like to sort of look around on eBay, and this is something that some kid built a long time ago, a pretty rare model. It's a 1966 Johan, once again, Plymouth Fury, the full-size Fury. But way back, somebody altered the wheelbase and put, move the front wheels forward and hand painted Ken Brooks auto body on it with driver David Pearson. A rare kit, but the work on this is, is yeah. interesting. I mean, the rear axle is still in this spot, bumpers for leaf springs, but some yeah. kid built this. Ford, like a coupe bumper. Yeah, yeah, and the axle's still back here from the Johan frame, but you know what? Some kid built this back in the 60s and it's cool. I wish it could talk. But the Hillborn Hemi right there from Johan, which is just a golden piece of plastic right there. Oh, yeah, and the headers and collectors just yeah. hanging down. Just mean. Yeah. Ready to pounce, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, buying pre built kits can be cool. And how do you feel about 3D printing? Are we there? Or? I see things I'd like to build in yeah. 3D. If, if you could get the right car, I would, I would definitely be interested. Yeah. But, you know, I'd say I've, I've got so much stuff now that I want trying to get done yep. that uh, I, don't, I don't need to add that dimension to me. <laughs> but uh, I can see buying wheels and things like that. And, and so. I will say that uh, these, yeah, these are 3D printed American Racing Torque Thrust right there. Pretty good. The only thing that's weird is it's kind of a resiny kind of stuff. I use super glue, yep. but it's kind of weird. Like the bodies, I bought a couple models in 3D and they're a little bit like a record player, the, the, the steration, yep. you know, but they're interesting. 3D printing is, is it has its place, but not in mass production, I don't think. It really does, and it's I think it's still in progress. Right now with that technology, we can create something, can fine-tune it digitally, you know, get the 
the spokes on the wheels just the way we want. We can build several sets of offsets, but then we can output it. We could just cut a mold from that. We don't necessarily need to print it, and that mold could be an injection mold or a resin, resin mold. mold. And I guess it's true that you know if you want to make that body shell in one day, it's going to have a lot of, of terracing, but if you have a month to make it, well, then it's great, but that's not good for mass production. But it's an interesting technology. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to exists. come around, and I think also with scanning. You know, we're at a point where one of the, the weak points is to scan a full-size car. You can definitely do it. It's expensive. But we're getting at a point now where you can do some of the rough work, even with an iPhone. In the right app, you can scan your parts, Especially if you're doing a wheel or a hood scoop or something, you can do it pretty quick and then print it out. I still like carving stuff. Yeah, I I, I, I like buying old kits and using them. But you know, I used yeah. to. I didn't know what this thing was, but it's it truly is. Technology is is an astonishing thing. It's coming on strong, and I just need to find a way to get decals made um, electronically. And this this has got to be a way. I think again, well, I got it's my final. I'm still in fourth grade when it comes to model, but not first or second or third, but not not fifth either. But making graphics is my uh, my thing, and I'm sure electronics will be the answer on on getting that done. Well, I actually all three of us have been creating decals, you have a need for that. We all have different solutions, but basically what we're doing is we know what we want. So we're just going to a guy who can make the magic happen and put it on paper so we could then get it yeah. on our models. I know both you guys are sending stuff out, and I am too. It's yeah, one thing I try to do is just give the, give the guy making the decals a map of the sizes of the, the spots and then give him what you want to have done on the car, like this thing right here. You always have a great twist. This Chrysler, it's like seeing Sandy Elliott over there, but then looking at this and going, wait a minute, what did I just see? That's not a dart. That's right. Well, again, Johan did this, the, the Chrysler turbine car, which was basically just a regular turbine car, but I reimagined it as an altered wheelbase match racer. You know, I moved the rear axle forward and gave it basically a, you know, a torsion bar front suspension. But for an engine, you know, the reality is a, a turbine is not going to be that competitive against cameras. So I did the A925 dual overhead cam Doomsday Hemi. And this engine is actually from the AMT 70 Super B kit, the Pro Street version. And I put some hillborns on it with low and high speed intake ports. It actually had four intake ports per hole or two. And then I just kind of made it. Now here's these custom decals. These are actually from that fellow in Michigan, uh, Josh Mummert at, uh, at Bedlam Creations, I think it is. Nice stuff. But again, I had to draw the pictures of what I wanted. He scanned them and made it happen. But it is fun. Making something that never happened. And the Johan decals on the front fenders, that was kind of something I, I had done. And half the time, just take a picture of a piece of box art and then send that, that's about as good. Just crop it, you know. Yeah, and, uh, he can outline it and build it in. He did the decals on my Corvette, the red number six car. That's Josh Mummer. Great job. Okay, yeah. at, at, at Bedlam Creations, yeah. I guess, yeah. Really good. You had a full-size Nova altered car, right? I did, yeah. You ever build a model of that? You know, I did, I did. I didn't bring yeah. it here, but if you, if you follow me from Hot Rod. I was at Hot Rod Magazine for about seven years and I had a car called the Wilshire Shaker. It was a 63 Chevy Nova and I turned it into an altered wheelbase funny car for the street and it had a Hillborn injected 502 push button torque flight. I did do a model of that but what I found, I built three altered wheelbase cars in real life so far and it's far less expensive to build these. So if I spend like 200 bucks on this, that's nothing compared to a set of titanium locks for my Hemi dart. <laughs> so I'd rather build model cars to be honest with you and they're a lot easier to build and they don't burn oil or gas or anything. So right. And there's basically no heavy lifting. That's right, no heavy lifting. I'm done with that. <laughs> and they're as much fun, you know, and they really are. It takes about a month to build one of these things. I, I sort of sit and listen to podcasts like Model Car Muse. Yeah, Model, Model Car, Car Muse. And yeah, I mean, that's, I listen to, I love the junkyard crawls. Junkyard crawl. When yeah. I, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. When I'm building. It's a, yeah, and Rick, I gotta say, I'd, I'd love to see any kind of a YouTube thing you create because you've got stories to tell. <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah. My dream is that somebody somewhere is going to scan one of these old Johan kits and re-release them, you know, because the tooling is gone apparently. You know, a lot of the stuff was scrapped. So I, I always say that uh, when there's a will, there's a way. I know that the Rommel's Rod, the old monogram half-track Tom Daniel vehicle, was scanned from a kit and brought back from air. The tooling's gone. So if that can be done, hopefully, right? I can see it happen to all those javelins that people want to see. <clears throat> Comets are coming back, I believe. That holding hers kit, uh, Johan, uh, so they maximized their tooling because they had a stock Cadillac ambulance and then they had a, a 
a stock hearse and a stock ambulance, and this, they got three kits out of that basic tooling. So, uh, and remember, there's also the Roarin Rambulance, which was a dual hemi-powered ambulance, but uh, that's the fun of, of model building then or now. Even Mobius right now, they're doing amazing stuff, you know, bringing back the altered wheelbase Mopars and you know, they're brand new tools. I hear there's a Maverick in the works. Is that, is that a thing? I've heard, the rumor, yeah. I've heard rumors. We'll see. Yeah.